This tool may end up saving your life one day or someone else's. Anyways, the old coot here coming at you with another exciting video. This is the Rescue Me Seatbelt Cutter and Window Breaker Tool. There are other uses for this, which I will talk about in a future video, so stay tuned for that. But basically, the way it works is uh, there's different ways that you can attach this into your vehicle so that it's easy to access. And here's some examples. I personally am fond of the headrest kind of way. And obviously if you're right-handed or left-handed, that'll tell you which side of your headrest to put this on. But these are the different options. And then if you purchase separately, you can also get, what is that? A sun visor clip and also a dashboard clip if you want to go ahead and go for that option. But here's what's going on. Let's say you get into a car accident, right? It's you yourself and car suddenly bursts into flames. You need to get out of that car as quickly as possible. Try your door handle. Obviously, if it's not working and you can't get out, the car won't unlock. You may be in a situation where you need to cut the seatbelt and also just exit the vehicle as quickly as possible through whatever the closest window is or the safest window to exit from. You never know how your car could be oriented after a car accident, right? In the, in the literature, it kind of shows you some examples. You may be facing down where you're pushing down on that seatbelt button and it's just absolutely not releasing. The car could end up on its side. The car could end up upside down. So you never know when you need to just cut the seatbelt and get out of there. Also, your, your children, your kids, train your kids how to use this thing because you never know when they might be the one that's going to rescue you. You could have a medical event, heart attack, stroke, aneurysm, you name it. Who knows? There are a gajillion different scenarios. But anyways, let's use the headrest example. And I will do a more in-depth video soon, so stay tuned for that. But let's just do the headrest scenario where you attach this to your headrest, you get into an accident, the doors aren't working. You cannot open the doors or unlock them for whatever reason. And you absolutely need to get out of that vehicle. You don't, you don't, or you can't wait for emergency responders to arrive. Or maybe you're like on a dark desert highway where there's just no help around for miles and you don't know what's going to happen. And you absolutely need to get out of the vehicle or submerged underwater. You kind of get the idea here. What you want to do is this part would zip tie around your headrest, depending on whether you're right-handed or left-handed you know, orient it to best be easily accessible for you. And then what you would do is if this is attached to your headrest and now you need to go ahead and cut your seatbelt, what you would do is pull. So just give it a, give it a good tug. And as you pull this, this part will separate from this part. And this part basically is now in your hands. And what you want to do is you want to orient this give or take at around a 45 degree angle to the, what you're going to cut, which is going to be your seatbelt. So on your body, it would look a lot like this, right? It would look something similar to this, where you're going to feed this in to the seatbelt and then pull straight through and cut. Let me show you that. We're going to show you different angles here. So here's the first angle. You're just basically pulling through and cutting so that the seatbelt cuts. Now you can actually get out. If you can unlock the doors, go ahead and unlock the doors, open the doors and pull the doors open. If you absolutely need to break the window, I'll show you how to do that in a second. But let me show you a different angle here. So here's basically a seatbelt now. And what you're doing is, is you're feeding this part, right? The opening there where the blade is. You're feeding this into the actual seatbelt itself, if you can see. So oriented on your body, it would look like this. Basically what you're doing is, is you're doing this kind of thing. And then if you can, if you can pull down and, a, and a kind of like in a downward motion and also at a 45 degree angle. So you're basically pulling at a 45 degree angle across the seatbelt. Here's this part you're going to pull and it's going to cut right through just like butter. And that should help you to get out of your seatbelt at least. Remember, if, you're, if your car is oriented in an awkward position after the accident and you feel tension against the seatbelt, you don't know if you're up, down, sideways, whatever the case may be. You could be in, in a normal position. You could be facing downhill. You could be upside down or on the side of the vehicle. You just, you never know how you're going to be oriented. So try to make sure that you can at least have your feet touching something, or you might want to use your other hand to grab onto like the door handle, the steering wheel, just something to kind of stabilize yourself. Cause you could end up in a clamshell position where you don't know where up, down, sideways is or whatever the case may be. It could be dark, right? That kind of vibe. You could be underwater. You don't know what's going to happen. So just try to orient yourself in a way so that when you do cut the seatbelt, you don't just go crashing to whatever the bottom is, whether that's the roof of your car, the floor of your car, the side of your car, whatever the case may be. But anyways, once you have successfully cut through the seatbelt itself, again, I'll show you this again in real time here. What we're doing is, is so we're coming in and we're cutting straight through and you're basically going to cut through the seatbelt. Once you've done that, you basically want to find 
the corner of whatever piece of glass you're going to try to break to get out of the vehicle. So that could be the driver's side. That could be the passenger side. That could be the back window or even the front windshield. Just try to find the corner of that piece of glass. You'll have an easier time breaking the glass. And you may need to do this a couple of different times, depending on the angle, the curvature of the glass, how you place it, where you place it. If it doesn't work the first or second time, just move it like an inch or two in a different direction away from the actual corner. Maybe that will work for you better. Just keep trying until you get it right. But anyways, what's going to end up happening here is I'll, I'll try to show you as best I can without actually activating the device. But there's a piston in there with a point on it, kind of like a, a sharp like dagger, if that's how you want to imagine it. What happens is, is when you push this against the corner of the glass, there's a spring-loaded mechanism in there, which will cause that piston in there to push out about a millimeter or so, maybe even a little bit less. But it basically exposes like a sharp spike. And that's what actually the, the pushing against the glass motion, the spring loadedness, also the material that that spike is made out of is what actually breaks the glass. So as you do this, I'm not, I can't actually do it because, oh, but let's see, but basically when you push down, that spike will be exposed about a millimeter or so. So it doesn't shoot out or anything. It just kind of exposes that tip and that pressure, the force, you kind of get the idea, will break the glass. Let's say you're a good Samaritan, right? You have this in your vehicle, you come across an accident. Talk to the person, right? Obviously, if the person is conscious and they're alert and they're somewhat just coming around, you know, talk to them. Hey, can you unlock your door so I can open the door or try to open their open their door on your own before breaking the glass? Because obviously, if someone was in like a minor fender bender and you want to be Ricky Rescue and come along and break their window, you may end up in court, you know, just saying for breaking or damaging their personal property. So talk to the person. Are they conscious? Are they alert? Can you talk them through unlocking their door and getting their door open if obviously they're unconscious ah that phone every time hold on i'll be back in a sec okay that was a quick one sometimes the phone rings at the most random moment but anyways if you're able to talk them through what's going on and you can open their door great if you can't and they're unconscious and obviously it looks like they went through some medical event maybe they had a heart attack stroke aneurysm whatever the case may be then you might be in a situation where you do need to break the glass to actually get them out of the vehicle if the vehicle's on fire or it looks like there's smoke or flames or something where you absolutely need to remove them from the vehicle obviously if the car goes into a ditch filled with water and it looks like the car may be submerged or drowning situation or that kind of, there it goes again, hold on. There goes that phone again. Spam risk, right? It's always spam risk. But anyways, if you're in that situation where you absolutely need to break the window, then obviously go to whatever side is the safest side of the vehicle or safest piece of glass to break the window just so you can manually unlock the door if you need to and then get them out of the vehicle. But same rules apply. Basically aim for the corner, right? Remember, look at the photos, kind of get the idea there. Aim for the corner of the piece of glass. Let's say in this instance, this was the corner. You know, try the actual corner, push in, the glass should break. What you can do is as a good Samaritan, you have the affordability of maybe taking off your shirt, right? Wrap your hand in a towel if you have that available to you, a shirt, a towel, just so when you push through that glass, you're not going to cut yourself, right? And cause damage to yourself when you're, when you're pushing through, breaking the glass, and then your hand's obviously going to follow through and you may cut yourself, especially tinted windows, right? Tinted windows that have any kind of lamination, Take your shirt off, or if you have a towel, use it, wrap it around your hand, your wrist, your forearm, just so as you break that glass, you're not gonna cut yourself prematurely. You kind of get the idea or cut yourself unnecessarily. So once you cut the glass, you know, talk to the person. Are they now conscious? Are they awake? Are they alert? Can they undo their seatbelt? You know, if they're able to do it and they can undo their seatbelt and they can open the door on their own, great. If not, you need to cut their seatbelt, you know, same rule applies. Basically, just make sure that you place this on the seatbelt use a 45 degree angle. Obviously, if the person, how would this be oriented? It'd be oriented like this, right? This would be the driver's, the driver's kind of seatbelt, right? Seatbelt's coming across this way. What you would do is just go ahead and put this on their seatbelt, right? 45 degree angle, cut, and then just pull straight through. Let me do it this way just so you can kind of see it again. So there you go. Just cut straight through and then obviously un get them out of the car open the door, get them out, do whatever you got to do. But anyways, you kind of get the idea. Stay tuned. I'm going to do one more video just after this one, which kind of explains this process and this device a little bit better. So stay tuned for that video. If you're curious, the, these do come in all different colors, 
different combinations. You can buy a one pack, a two pack, three pack, the list goes on and on, different colors. I'm a fan of the brightly visible color because in a nighttime situation, or in a situation where the car may be flipped over on its side, or if, God forbid, you happen to go underwater for whatever reason, you go careening off of a bridge or whatever, at least you can see it. You know where it is, you know what it is, and and definitely follow the instructions of the manufacturer. I'm partial to using the zip tie around the headrest method. That's just me, you know, but use whatever kind of works for you. But I kind of like this because I know where it is. I can just reach up behind me where the headrest is. I know where it is. I can grab onto it and pull it. Practice, practice, practice as much as you possibly can. Also train your kids how to do this. Your children, whoever's in the car with you, loved one, significant other, whatever, just so that they know where it is. And if if a medical event happens to you, they can be the ones to rescue you. Just saying, you kind of get the idea. Obviously, be careful. There are there is a sharp blade in there. You kind of get the idea. But anyways, with that being said, I will put a link down below in the description. Make sure to check that out. Also, a link in the comment section. And this will also be on my Amazon storefront. EDC, right? Everyday carry people. I highly recommend you carry this just so that you could be a good Samaritan one day or, you know, a lot of stuff is going on in the world right now. You never know, especially females. You never know if you're in a situation where you may be in a situation where you need to cut yourself out of a situation. You know, just saying this could be something else. And I think you know where I'm going with this. If you happen to be in that situation where you need to rescue yourself from a bad situation, you know, put control back into your hands. You may want to carry these in your purse, in your backpack, in your whatever, you know, EDC carry case or whatever the case may be. But anyways, with that being said, links are down below. I'm the old coot and I'll catch you all in the next second video. Stay tuned. Literally the video right after this one, I'm going to get more in depth and greater detail about what this is, how to use it and some different situations where you may need to use it.